Hello, and welcome back to Storyline Recap. Today, I'm going to explain a thriller movie from 2019 called, Escape Room. Spoilers ahead, watch out and enjoy. The movie begins with a man who is seen attempting to get away from an imploding room by settling a riddle. Three days earlier, timid physical science understudy, Zoe goes to a talk on the quantum Zeno effect hypothesis, which expresses a framework can't change while you are watching it. Her teacher moves her to face a challenge over the Thanksgiving break. Ben, seen prior in the imploding room, is a stock kid at a supermarket with a smoking propensity baffled at his supervisor's refusal to elevate him to a superior job and more significant compensation. Jason is a youthful stockbroker regarded among his colleagues for his high speed and determined worker way of life. Zoe, Ben, and Jason are gifted a riddle box tended to by a confided associate, Zoe's teacher, Ben's chief, and Jason's client. In the wake of addressing the riddle, a piece of information welcomes them to the minus escape room for an opportunity at $10,000 would it be advisable for them they effectively escape. War veteran Amanda, previous excavator Mike, and escape room lover Danny show up and join Zoe, Ben, and Jason in what seems, by all accounts, to be a holding up region. Whenever Ben has a go at passing on the space to smoke, the entryway handle severs, locking within, and uncovering a broiler temperature check. After Mike finds a duplicate of Fahrenheit 451, Zoe sets the temperature to 451 degrees Fahrenheit. Installed heat boards continuously turn on carrying the space to progressively hot temperatures, causing alarm among all aside from Danny who will not accept that the hotness is genuine. Zoe sees Amanda's disquiet and attempts to quiet her with water from the water cooler. The gathering gets a call encouraging them to adhere to posted guidelines. Zoe sees a sign requesting liners to be utilized for drinks and the gathering notices a getaway vent to the following room opens when they simultaneously push down on six napkins. Jason gets away first, trailed by Mike and Amanda while Zoe acknowledges filling a glass with water will hold down a liner long enough for her to get away from the room. Ben and Danny race to cover all liners with glasses until insufficient water stays since Amanda drank a glass before. Ben discharges his jar into the last glass and the two break in the nick of time as the room overwhelms on fire. In a mountain lodge, the gathering, except Danny, becomes worried at how genuine the game is becoming. The cameras in each room do nothing when the gathering needs assistance. Jason looks for a seven-lettered name associated with you'll go down in history to open the lodge entryway. Ben has a flashback where he was driving with companions singing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer not long before a head-on impact. Ben gives Rudolph as the code and the gathering exit and enters bone-chilling temperatures on a frozen stream similarly to the lodge entryways and windows lock shut. Looking through their environmental elements, Jason finds an entryway requiring a key and the gathering fish out a critical encased in a 3D square of ice. Danny endeavors to recover Ben's lighter to liquefy the block yet falls into the ice with the lighter and suffocates. The gathering is troubled by their deficiency of Danny and frightened at how determined his passing was, taking note of he fell into the ice when he snatched the lighter. Dreading hypothermia, Jason persuades the gathering to cluster and utilize their aggregate body hotness to dissolve the ice. When they recover the key Jason figures out how to turn the lock, yet the entryway doesn't open. The gathering escapes across the stream into another entryway that opens similarly as all the leftover ice implodes underneath them. The third room is a rearranged bar with pool tables. As the gathering enter, they feel the whole room hoist to another height. They notice an entryway without a door handle. Mike thinks the eight ball missing from the pool table should be the door handle concealed someplace in the bar. A phone string drops from the roof and the call cautions the gathering to tread carefully. Music starts to play followed by an ear-penetrating dial-up sound. Each time the grouping is rehashed, a piece of the floor falls away. Amanda ascends the divider behind the bar and observes protection with a four-digit code. The gathering observes the numbers they need in a sliding tile puzzle addressed by Zoe yet can't open the safe. Zoe momentarily falls oblivious and has a flashback to a plane accident where she was the last one standing left topsy-turvy while everybody was tied to their seat. All bits of the floor fall and Mike, Ben, Jason, and Zoe gather close to the exit. Zoe advises Amanda to enter the numbers altered and in converse to recreate the room conditions. Amanda effectively opens the eight ball yet can't securely move across to join the gathering. Forfeiting herself, Amanda figures out how to toss the eight ball to Jason similarly as she plunges to her demise. The gathering enter a medical clinic ward containing beds indistinguishable from ones every one of the game's players were treated in the wake of being pronounced as the last one standing. Zoe endure a plane accident, Mike was the main digger pulled alive after a collapse, each of Ben's companions was killed after he drove tanked, 
and just Jason was found by the Coast Guard after he and his school flatmates boat toppled in bone-chilling waters. The gathering get familiar with Danny's whole family was killed via carbon monoxide harm and Amanda was the main trooper in her unit to endure a night impact in Iraq. The leftover survivors acknowledge conscious arranging prompted them all to show up at the break space to see who might be the most fortunate out of the fortunate and parts of the game have been demonstrated in their lives. A TV broadcast expresses the gathering has 5 minutes to live except if they put their heart into it. When time is up, the room will be loaded up with poison gas. Jason, Ben, and Mike find an EKG machine to observe the ideal pulse that will prompt the following room. Zoe, needing to outmaneuver the game creators, utilizes the reasoning of the quantum Zeno effect and incapacitates every one of the cameras in the room with the desire for making sense of a way. Accepting a high pulse will save the gathering, Jason accidentally kills Mike by impacting him a few times with a defibrillator. When harmful gas starts to spill into the room, Jason connects himself to the EKG and allows the toxin to bring down his rate to under 50 BPM. The pathway to the following room opens and Jason and Ben escape, however, Zoe will not track, purportedly falling and kicking the bucket in the wake of debilitating the last camera. Jason and Ben go into the fifth room with dividers and furniture designed by optical deceptions. Incensed at how Jason insensitively killed Mike and saw no point in aiding Zoe, Ben feels Jason was not the last one standing by the decision. Given his way of behaving in the game, Ben coerces Jason into conceding he intentionally killed his flatmate adrift for himself to endure utilizing the red parka. While opening a portal prompting the following room, Jason and Ben are tainted by a psychedelic substance. Ben observes the counteractant infusion expected for one beneficiary and the two battle until the very end. Jason breaks Ben's leg yet is killed on sway when Ben kicks him into a table corner. Ben escapes into the last room. The last room gets back to the initial success of occasions in the film. Ben figures out how to contain the flares in the chimney and use it as an unfinished plumbing space to try not to be squashed. He arises in the last space and is welcomed by the Game Master, who plans the departure rooms. The Game Master makes sense of the reason for the game, uncovering an associating subject picks the contenders, for example school competitors, last ones standing, and so on, trailed by people wagering on champs. Ben trusts he may now leave having won, Yet the Game Master attempts to kill Ben to stop the insider facts of the game from being uncovered. Zoe figures out how to have made do by taking a breathing device from the medical clinic bed and interfacing its tubing through one of the openings made by the debilitated cameras. Pretending demise when two cleaners go into room number 4 to eliminate proof, Zoe weakens them and escapes. Zoe figures out how to save Ben before both killing the Game Master and escaping. Ben and Zoe have been treated for wounds yet all the proof at the departure room office are deleted when Zoe shows up with specialists. A half year after the fact, Zoe persuades Ben to join her on a trip to the Minus Escape Room HQ in New York after she pinpoints their geographic directions from their logo. Unbeknownst to them, the game's planner is now one stride ahead and intends to trap Zoe and Ben into one more game by transforming their trip into a recreated escape with a 4% opportunity at endurance. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and hit the like button to help the channel out. See ya.